Hello everyone, my name is Kirill. You are on the Auto Advisor channel. Have you ever wondered what kills an engine? The list of how you can kill the engine is very long. I could tell you this long and boring list, but I will have a different approach. I want to tell you about the physics, and when you understand the concept, you'd be able to tell me what can kill the engine and how to properly operate it. Now we'll talk about three main aspects that should be understood, then I will dwell on each of them in more detail. The most important thing is that most engine parts while working experience friction, that is, during their operation they come into contact with each other, so lubrication is necessary for proper operation, and thus oil is required. Oil must be of a certain viscosity. For example, the cylinders wrap against the wall of the engine, then the camshafts, then also the connecting rods, etc. I don't think anyone needs to be told to change the oil regularly, but I would like to say that many people recommend changing the oil even more often than the officials do. I know people who change oil every 8-10 thousand kilometers. It depends on how the engine is used as well as some other factor. But I also know those who do not change the oil even after 20-30 thousand kilometers. The oil needs to be changed because it loses its properties over time. The oil works at high temperatures and therefore the additives that are in the oil can burn out. Also, wet particles get into the oil and this all worsens the lubrication. I recommend that you change the oil at least as often as a manufacturer recommends it, namely 10-15 thousand kilometers. Go to outer Ostrov that buy. Our managers will select the oil that is right for your car. No foreign matter, be it dust or something else, should get into the engine and oil, because all this affects friction and results in engine wear. Therefore, when you change the oil, never forget to change the fuel filter and the air filter as well as the oil filter, and check the oil level as often as possible. Most cars have such a dipstick, where you can immediately see at what level it is. I hope everyone knows that this is done on a cold engine. The second physical factor is linear expansion. Since the engine consists of metal and various alloys, as the temperature rises, all parts increase in size. EI expand linearly. Therefore, when designing an engine, engineers take into account at what temperatures all parts operate and design the engine specifically for certain operating temperatures, so it does not jam during expansion and everything works as it should. The engine needs a cooling system to run properly, so keep an eye on the engine temperature. Many people have an indicator on the dashboard. If this indicator is in a red zone, then you need to stop immediately and check the level of coolant. Change the coolant liquid according to the regulations and under no conditions, fill in water instead of it. Some people try to be smart and fill in water instead of coolant. This leads to the formation of scale, which leads to a slow death of the engine. Don't forget about very important part, the thermostat and the pump. They must also be changed strictly according to the regulations. They are responsible for the circulation of the coolant. Therefore, if it is disrupted, the engine will immediately overheat. It's required to operate the engine in normal mode. You should not drive too slow, but you should also not drive like crazy. If you drive at low speeds, at low operating temperatures, then carbon deposits will form in the combustion chamber. But if you drive at high loads, this will lead to overheating of the engine. The third important physical aspect is the compression process. That is, during their operation, the pistons compress the fuel-air mixture. This implies that this mixture must be compressed. If something incompressible, such as water, enters the combustion chamber, then hydrolock will occur. 
There are people who are riding through big puddles or on the beach, but if a lot of water gets into the combustion chamber, hydrolock occurs and engine internal components may break. When the piston moves up and there is water instead of an air-fuel mixture, which is compressible and water isn't, the piston will either break on its own or blow up your engine. These are the three main physical factors by which the engine can fail. So now we can predict situations in which engine failure is possible. I have an interesting proposal for you. Let's come up with ways to kill the engine as quickly as possible. Write your suggestions in the comments. In no way am I encouraging you to do this in practice. Just think about it and then you will understand exactly how the engine works and what exactly can kill it. I hope this video was useful. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on that bell. My name is Kirill, all the best to you and see you again.